Sure, it's a pleasure to be here at the Digital and Wellness Summit and uh, today I spoke about two priorities. So the first one was about the French Digital Health Roadmap and the second was about the French EU Presidency which started in January and which will end in June and which is a very ambitious agenda in terms of uh, actions, in terms of events and in terms of uh, legislative roadmap as well. Yes, totally. So uh, even before the pandemic there was already massive data collection but the pandemic has raised the awareness and the need uh, to collaborate on data collection and making data available for secondary use of health data, for example. So what we've seen in many countries in the EU is that there have been um, new data access gateways which have been implemented. For example, in France, there's a French Health Data Hub, which is a unique data uh, access uh, point actually to um, access data for public interest research for health. And that also happened in Finland, for example. And many other countries are following that trend now. So the COVID crisis has fostered the dynamic and has ac actually accelerated these uh, measures and these um, implementations uh, actually at the national, but also the European way, so at the European level. We've seen now in a few weeks we're going to have a new proposition, a new proposal for the EU um, EHDS regulation. EHDS means European Health Data Space, so it means that many countries will actually implement such national health data hubs and even at the EU level we might have some form of data exchange happening through that. Lots of plans and it already started off with a very ambitious uh, ethics and citizenship and health data conference, a ministerial conference that took place on February 2nd. And this all goes line in hand in hand with what the French president announced for the French EU presidency in December. The three core values are strength, relaunch and European belonging. So this conference united many EU health ministers actually and lots of representatives of the digital health ecosystem to discuss the need for those ethics principles for digital health, which have been adopted by the um, eHealth network early on. And the roadmap is currently being implemented until June, when the eHealth network will meet again. So that's one major priority, is those ethics principles for digital health, to make sure the roadmap is set and ready in June, when this eHealth network meets again. Other priorities are obviously to push towards um, progressive harmonization of market access procedures for digital health solutions, which is also part of the, the whole program of this presidency, but also uh, to speak more about how can we better ensure that, that terminologies, that there's um, harmonious ter terminologies, for example, with the adoption of SOMED CT, we can ensure that there is interoperability between health data. Indeed, um, the, the developed healthcare systems which have universal health coverage have the advantage that they have long history in terms of data collection. So for example, you can see in the Nordic countries, it's been years and de decades actually that uh, these countries have been collecting uh, health data since in big cohorts since the Second World War for example. So there's a long history in terms of data collection and lots of know-how how to collect data. In France for example since we have uh, the chance of having national health coverage uh, with national health insurance most of the population is insured so there's also data collection that goes with that. So it's an advantage but it also means massive funding is necessary to ensure the good quality of these data and also to ensure that they're interoperable and usable actually for research. So that's actually something that requires a lot of funding and which is available in many developed countries, if I may say, but not yet in emerging and developing countries. But the need is still there. So what we can do in some of the more developed countries is to pass on the lessons learned from implementing such national health data hubs because many errors might have happened and that these merchant countries, for example, can learn from when they do the same because massive data is also available in these settings, but it might not be exactly comparable. But it would be good to pass on the lessons learned from this implementation so that the whole world, all of our healthcare systems can benefit from the use of health data for better health systems and to improve health of all of us. So what will last after the pandemic is the implementation of such data sharing mechanisms. So first of all at the national level, but also at the EU level. So what we're tr trying to do now, which has been accelerated through the, the COVID crisis, is that we see the need of sharing data across European countries. And this will last because the, tomorrow's solutions, tomorrow's needs for healthcare systems and healthcare pathways, they need European or even international responses. You know, they need, we're no longer in a national setting where we can just say, okay, this is my research question, my research um, is only based on a national population, for example. No, tomorrow's solutions need international data sets as well. So we're going really in that direction and that will remain. 
I think some other gains that we have had from the crisis, obviously we all know about that, is about digital health solutions, digital consultations. So um, we all know much more about our our own possibility to actually interact with healthcare professionals uh, through remote consultations. We all are more aware about our own health thanks to mobile health applications, for example. So all of this has been accelerated through the COVID crisis, which has much done to digitalize our in healthcare interactions, our healthcare, our way of seeing healthcare actually. So what we now need to be aware of is that all of these advances are being totally underpinned by ethical values so that all of this doesn't happen without consent of the patients and also happens in a way that it remains available and accessible to those patients.